How's it going everybody? Chef Gordon here, cooking up our first profession video tutorial here. And today we are covering what is probably a majority of people's favorite gathering profession, and that is mining. In case some of you are stumbling across this video and you're already halfway through mining, I'm going to have a bunch of timestamps for everything you need to know in the info box down below. So mining is one of three gathering professions that you can go in the game at the moment. You have mining, skinning, as well as herbalism. All three of these are required for their counterpart professions as well. So most people combine mining with something like engineering as well as blacksmithing because you can use those materials you gather from mining to turn them into either gear, gadgets, grenades, whatnot. So mining is probably the second easiest profession to get up all the way to 300. And I think most people are in agreement here where they say skinning is just the easiest profession in the game to level up. Mining, however, very, very close second because a lot of your early levels you can actually get straight off the auction house. If you decide to go that route, you can just purchase the ore and smelt it for your skills. But this guide is actually going to be kind of a two part guide within one video. I'm going to be showing you how you can power level your mining super efficiently if you're level 60 and you just want to get started and bang out 1 to 300. I'm going to show you the best routes as well as the gold per hour for those routes for each type of ore. And then I'm also going to be providing you how you're able to actually level up 1 to 300 mining as well as level up your character, which is what I was able to do on my druid when uh, you know, servers initially came out. I was actually the first person on Horde side Feralina to be able to mine Thorium and that was because I was dungeon power leveling and I was actually able to keep my mining up with the strategy as well. So we'll go over both those. So to begin, you're going to want to pick up the profession mining from any of the trainers. Best way to start off, in my opinion, is you want to pick up mining in Razor Hill or Orgrimmar because that's where you're going to be starting mining copper because Dorotar is the best place to mine copper. You have crazy routing, it's super condensed, and it's you know obviously by the horde capital, the major capital of Orgrimmar. But what's really cool about it is Razor Hill, the second zone for trolls or orcs, is the only secondary city for the horde that allows the learning capabilities of mining. Everywhere else, Torrens have to go to Thunder Bluff and Undeads have to go all the way to Undercity. So Orcs and Trolls have a little bit of a head start to pick up mining, which is nice. So once you've learned mining, it is one of the two major professions that you can have. So again, definitely recommend either going engineering or blacksmithing with this. But the main thing that you need to do is put the spells that you learn once you acquire mining on your taskbar. So you need to put fine materials as well as smelting on your taskbar to make sure you're able to one track the nodes on the map to acquire the ore and then two turn those ores into bars allowing you to either sell them or utilize them in the other profession and don't forget to pick up your mining pick because without this even if you see it you can't mine it here is a list complimentary of icyveins.com of every single mining trainer in classic vanilla for both alliance horde as well as the neutral mining trainers don't forget, as you level up, you will occasionally have to go back to one of those trainers to allow yourself to carry your profession further as far as the skill cap ceiling goes. So you'll eventually have to go learn your way to 150, 225, and then 300 as a cap. So this guide is going to be a little bit horde biased at the start. However, I will include, in my opinion, the best options for Alliance to start and you know get their mining underway. However, once you reach a certain threshold, which is around the iron level, that's when the guide comes online for both Horde and Alliance because you're going to be sharing those zones for the most part. So just wanted to preface really quick that you can actually smelt your way all the way up to 177 mining skill, which basically takes out half of the, you know, the workload that you have to do. So for those of you who are just trying to get to that end game goal of Thorium as soon as possible, definitely make sure you're making use and take advantage of smelting to get your mining skill up. Whether that be, you know, you have someone mine it for you and you smelt it yourself or you just buy it, smelt it and then resell it. That's definitely a viable option as well. There is a little bit of a gray area though. So for example, to get to 125, to be able to smell iron and mine iron, you can smell all the way up to 112 with silver, but then you're still gonna have to get those last 13 points 
while mining yourself to actually physically get those levels up. But this is just a nice way to definitely pretty much have the workload that you're going to have to do. So again, like I just mentioned, once you do acquire the mining skill, you're going to want to be starting off in Durotar for mining copper ore. And you're going to take this all the way to 65, and at that point, that's when 10 comes online. And we'll get more on that later. But, like I said, Durotar is very, very nice to start off. So you're going to be starting off in Durotar no matter if you are leveling or you are just doing the 1-300 to 300 grind as a 60 already. Durotar is the spot to be. And what's really nice is you can actually take breaks halfway through the loop that I will show you at Razor Hill. And you can actually smelt that initial copper that you get for skill points as well. For Alliance, you're going to want to gather your copper in Dunmurrow. This is the starting zone for gnomes as well as dwarves. It has the best locations for copper early on. And for humans, it's not terrible to mine in Elwyn Forest, but a lot of the nodes are deep in the Kobolf Caves, which can be a very big hassle early on to acquire. And sadly for Night Elves, we don't get much love. There are zero copper nodes in the starting Night Elf zone of Teldrassil, and you will not be able to acquire any copper until you make your way towards Darkshore, and at that point you're level 10 to 12, so you really feel behind the pack. Once you hit a level of 65 mining, you can begin to obtain 10, and in my opinion, this is where the guide gets sporadic, because it seems like 10 is either everywhere, and at the same time, it is nowhere. So for Horde doing the power farming dungeon guide as well as leveling mining, you're going to want to go to Wailing Caverns. There's a minimum of two tin nodes per run, but I believe it can get up to four. And then for Alliance, you'll be entering dead mines at around level 15 or so, and there should be a couple of tin nodes per run there as well. So it's very nice to just get guaranteed 10 while leveling up doing these dungeon power farming groups. And if you're level 60 already and you're avoiding going into the dungeons, both Horde and Alliance are going to want to head to Hillspread Foothills. There's a very nice tin route that has a lot of silver in it as well, which you can begin to acquire at level 75 mining. When you've reached a total level of 125 mining, for those who are doing the dungeon power farm strat, you're going to want to head to Southern Barrens and enter Razorfen Crawl and do boar runs. There's a minimum of two iron nodes per run, and every now and then there's some gold woven into there, and I think you can get up to three or four iron deposits if you are lucky. And that's just a very, very nice way to max out your iron as you're leveling up, because I think I did almost around 60 boar runs while leveling up, and at that point, I was just ready to go straight into Mithril. However, if you're level 60 and you don't want to spam RFK, head to Arathi Highlands. Because not only is it, for whatever reason, never populated, it is actually the most iron-rich zone out of anywhere in vanilla. Compliments to Vanilla Twinhead. It is 188 potential spawns for iron. And the second best is Thousand Needles with 105. So once you do reach iron, in my opinion, this is where mining starts to make you a decent chunk of change because everyone is now starting to spam engineering for world PvP in hopes of phase 2 coming out and they want to get that honor system going early on. Iron grenades are a very, very popular item and you will need the heavy stone that you acquire off of the iron deposits to make those as well as the iron for the bars themselves. Once you have acquired a mining skill of 175, you can now start to mine mithril and there's definitely some big money here in mithril because the bars are utilized a ton in engineering as well as blacksmithing. You just need a very, very big lump sum of mithril to level up past mithril for both of those professions as well as the solid stone definitely goes for a decent chunk of change as well. So there's three viable options in my opinion for mining mithril. You can either do loops around hinterlands which is typically pretty crowded so mithril can seem sparse there as well as do loops of Teneris, which again is a very popular hotspot. However I recently have found in my opinion what is probably the best place to mine mithril and that of course is in blasted lands. 
So you can see here the Garrison Armory in Northern Blasted Lands has by far the most Mithril as well as Small Thorium nodes I have ever seen while playing this game so far. So on screen now, I'm actually showing you a live routing of the path that I take for Blasted Lands. You can actually do entire loops of Blasted Lands and have a pretty efficient route. It takes around 15 minutes or so, so you could do this multiple times per hour. And if you're still lucky enough to have a layered server like I am on Feralina, you can do one loop, hop layers, and then just immediately do another loop. I did around 10 loops of this the other day, and I think I was only contested on mining the mithril as well as small thorium in that cave, maybe around two of the 10 loops. So I was actually here from 175 all the way up to rich thorium. For those who are still on that dungeon power farm, you can enter Maradon to gather a couple mithril spawns. I believe there's a total of three per run, which is pretty nice because you could do things like princess runs. You can get several best in slot pieces for your character at level 60 as well. So you're getting a lot of, you know, probably three or four birds with one stone effectively while gathering that mithril in the dungeon farming group. So as previously mentioned, you're going to be hanging out in Blasted Lands doing this loop for quite a bit. I was here from 175 all the way up to 275 where I was mining Mithril, True Silver, as well as Small Thorium nodes. And this is by far the quickest way to do it in my opinion, unless you're doing something along the lines of Dark Iron Ore, which we'll get into that now. So depending where you're at level wise, when you reach 230 mining, you can begin to acquire dark iron ore. And there's a couple different ways that you could choose mining from this point. If you're leveling and say you're around level 52, you can go ahead and start doing prison runs in BRD with a power farming group. And there's at least two dark iron nodes for each loop that you do. And I believe I did probably close to 80 prison runs while I was leveling up to level 60 on my druid. So you're in there for quite a bit and that means there's a lot of dark iron to be had. As well as if you're already level 60 and you're 230, you can in your weekly molten core groups just ask your raid group to let you hit the dark iron because I think just on the average molten core clear if you don't go out of your way for certain dark iron spawns there's around eight or ten dark iron nodes that you can hit so there's just guaranteed points for you as well so there's definitely easy ways to cheese dark iron to gather you know those last little bit of mining points that you need to get to rich thorium so you've done it you finally reached 275 mining now you can have access to rich thorium which is the hail maker money maker for mining because you can now gather arcane crystals which at the moment on my server are worth around 40 to 44 gold each and they can only be accessed through rich thorium i think it's a three or four percent chance to drop per strike which is really really awesome if you know the efficient spots to gather rich thorium so there's a couple pretty decent loops that you could do for rich thorium if Angoro, for whatever reason, isn't crowded. There's a decent amount of concentrated rich thorium spawns in the central and southwestern spots of Angoro. You could also head to Wintergrasp and do the cave routing there, which is pretty efficient if you are a stealth class. Same goes for going into Silithus and entering the hives and doing stealth farms there. However, if you don't have the luxury of being a stealth class, there is always the option of doing dire mall drop runs, which is guaranteed to have two rich thorium spawns per run which is pretty efficient because you're not only gaining the thorium you're also gaining the boss drops and whatnot and potential epic boes that can drop along the way as well and that'll do it for our first ever professions video guide and hopefully there will be many more to come i'm thinking of doing a skinning one later this week and if you have any other suggestions of what you want me to go in depth on whether it be professions or pvp or anything like that feel free to leave a comment down below i'll have all my other social media such as twitch twitter and facebook as well as all that other good stuff in the info box down below and as always i'll see you all next time